Hello and welcome to the GnomeCast. My name's Tarmac, and this is the Mr. Pandaria Beta. It's a little bit of a video on if you're noobish to beta testing or anything like that, how to get a little bit better and what sort of things to look for in reporting your bugs. Now, to start off with, I'm a bit more of an art tester. So when it comes to these sorts of things, that's really what my eye's looking for. That's what I'm searching for, because it's just something that is more apparent to me. Everybody's got their strengths. Some people are numbers. Some people enjoy breaking the game. They enjoy trying to trying to cheat it and figure out ways around the content. Myself, I'm more of the, the art and that kind of resource tester. So to start off with a couple of things to keep an eye out for is objects not being where you would expect them, or rather where they should be. If you play through the Alliance side, this is the Horde, the uh, Hellscream's Hope area, but if you play through the Alliance side, You've got this wonderful transporter, little critter here nearby, and basically there should be a portal in the middle, but the portal's off to the side. Little things like that, where you've got an object not where it appears that it's supposed to be. Basic testing, we've got ourselves some axes on the wall that don't have a proper texture. This is something that, if you go back to Ogremar, you've also got the axes over there as well. So it's a general art resource, it's not specific to the Pandaria content general problem. Now I've got a quest that I'm supposed to be turning in. It should be, according to my mini-map, up at the top of this tower. But when we get there, we find that our quest NPC is not at the top of the tower. Now the reason for that is because he's on the ground behind the tower. Now this obviously doesn't do us much good. So something that should certainly be reported. Let them know that these things are in the wrong place. Now ultimately, there is it's very easy to, to fall into the mentality of somebody else must have reported it already. The problem with that though is that what happens if nobody did? Uh, I mean, Blizzard's doing all their own testing on this as well, obviously. So some of the more obvious things, things like a, a big quest NPC that is really not where he's supposed to be, it's unlikely that that hasn't been reported yet. In the case of all the bugs in this video, they all have been, whether by myself or by somebody else, and I had searched through just to make sure of that. So continuing our art testing lookout, here's an interesting one. So we've got this building up here, up on the top of the hill, and if you kind of play with your camera, you bring it down, you see that this, it, it's not that you can see up there because there's an intended hole. It's because it's actually missing some texturing. So you can see right up through, you can see the people standing and laying down on the top. Obviously this is a hole that needs to be patched in. It needs to have some sort of blocking put there, whether they pull the terrain out to line up with the edge of it, or whether they actually texture the underside. Either way, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Right, but they do need to patch that in because it looks bad. It's something that's just not, it's not the way that they want their game to look, I'm sure. Alright, so now I'm going to fade out, fade back in. We'll take a look at some numbers testing in the vendor systems. There's a couple of bugs right now where you can make an awful lot of gold. And obviously these, well, these will be things that will be removed because it's uh, quite an exploit. So here's the vendor that we're going to use for our little math test. Now, it doesn't matter which vendor you use right now. This is a problem clear across the game. If you right-click on the vendor, as per usual, it brings up the items. Now, you can see that the items are completely blank. And the reason for that is we've got ourselves a filter that goes by what spec you are. So right now, I'm a subtlety spec, so it's defaulting to that and thus giving me nothing in the items because it's a basic trade goods vendor. It has nothing for me. This is something that probably should be defaulting to all. Now again, little little details, little things like this that you want to keep an eye out for and put in reports, right? Figure out why it is that it's happening, report it, easy peasy. Now here's the actual bug that I was talking about in the vendors, and this one's a bit more problematic, and it does happen on quite a number of items, but not all of them, and that's where some of the testing gets a little bit tricky. So we've got resilient parchment here. I'm going to buy 10 of these because the numbers are easy. Right now I've got 31, 37 for gold. 10 resilient parchment should cost me four and a half. So I buy that. I drop down to 31, 33. Yep, looking good. 
sold for right about the right amount of gold. And it tells me that it's going to sell to the vendor for one gold 25. I take that and I sell it back to the vendor. Now, instead of having 3138 like I did, I now have 3145. If you do th go through the math on this one, what's actually happening is it's giving me the stack price for each individual item. So I've got 10, right? The stack price, stack sell price of this should be one gold, 25 silver. But it's giving me that for each of the 10 in the stack. The whole 10 should be worth 125. So it's ending up giving me quite a bit more. This is a bit more of the math side of things, keeping an eye on the numbers, keeping an eye on, on whether you're selling things for the right amounts or whether your, your attacks are doing the right amount of damage. Then you go and test a little bit further and you say, okay, well, I'm going to try the same thing with the Dust of Disappearance. I'm going to buy 10 of those. We've got ourselves you know, 11 gold here, so it should cost me about 100 or so, a bit over 100, and that's fine. Looks all nice and normal. And, oops, I already had two. Let me break those off real quick so my test is static. And we're going to sell that right back to the vendor. Well, that only sold back for 45, which is what it told me it was going to. So, all of a sudden, you can see that it's not that the vendor is doing this with everything that's stacking. It's only doing it with some things that are stacking. Dust of Disappearance didn't sell for the wrong amount of gold for that. that. That was correct. That was exactly what it was supposed to do. But the Resilient Parchment did not. So if you check maybe the common parchment, same sort of deal. Let's do 20 here because the numbers are a bit smaller. This should cost me about 20 silver. We're good. And it should sell back for six silver, the whole stack. If our previous testing with the resilient parchment worked out correctly, then what we should end up out of this is we should end up with about a gold and 20 or so. And we do. If you look over on the left side, the amount to buy it back is what it's actually something that sold to the vendor for. So obviously this is a problem. Now, I'm going to do another quick fade out, come back and we'll show another, another couple of sets of bugs, things again to keep an eye out for, and talk a little bit about how to report them. Okay, so here's a thing that's been bugging me for a little while. It's not really a big deal when everybody can fly, but when you're running around on a flying mount, in an area that you can't, you get that flight takeoff noise every time you jump. There should probably be a jump sound that doesn't have anything to do with the flight noise. It's not usually a big deal, as I say, when everybody can fly because you never it never matters. But when you're riding a flying mount in a new continent that you can't fly yet until you're level 90, it's a bit of a problem. Oh hey, look at that. So. Every now and then you'll just come across something when you're testing. Here's a couple of floating flowers that are just up in the air, another set right here. What would be nice is to have coordinates by default on the minimap, because then you can mark down exactly where it was that you found some art resource that's out of place or some other bug that exists. Now ultimately, how do you report these? At the moment in the game, the report bug feature is not currently working. The fact that the report bug feature is not yet implemented in the beta is kind of funny. A little bit ironic, perhaps. But I, I would be uh, expecting this to be a priority on the, the Blizzard team side. So right now, you're going to be doing most of your reporting on the Blizzard forums. There's a couple of different forums that handle this. There's your feedback forum, which is kind of your opinion thread place. There's the basic bug forum. You've got class and those sorts of bugs as well, and dungeons raids. The best idea when it comes to reporting any sort of a bug is to be as clear and concise as you possibly can. There's no need to write a novel about a little bug unless it requires that much time to, to truly explain what's happening and why it's broken. Right? So something as simple as an art resource, you explain where you found it. So we've got the previous one about that, that building over in Hellscream's Hope. Well, I'm going to say I found a, an untextured underside of a building in Hellscream's Hope that was able to be seen through from the player's perspective. Okay, so the title topic would be untextured building or untextured underside of building at Hellscream's Hope. And then in the body of the bug report, you're going to go and explain a little bit more detail about what it was that you saw and why it's a problem. From the feedback perspective, those ones tend to be a little bit longer because 
a basic one-liner opinion isn't going to be sitting on the front page for very long. It's not going to catch you a lot of attention. But either way, you've got to, be try, you've got to try and be as clear and concise as possible. Because not only are you going to be doing these bugs for the developers to look through and try and see if they can prioritize and see what ones are, are valid, you also have to make sure that it's easily searchable by other players. There's a bug in the game right now. If you kill a whole bunch of monsters and loot one of them, they all turn to face the same direction. All of the corpses turn. Well, if you didn't put the word corpse in your topic, other people searching for that bug may not find your post. They may think that it's not been reported yet. Right? There's no need to report these things twice. Anyways, I hope this was helpful in some respect to people that are maybe a little bit new to beta testing, keeping an eye on you know, these sorts of things. What sort of stuff do you look for? What kind of tester are you, are you going to be? What kind of person are you as far as what are you good at finding? Maybe you're just in this to try and pick out what's fun and what's not and tell the developers that you know, in, in the best possible way. That's perfectly okay. That's part of what the beta test is all about. It's not just, let's crunch some math. That's it. That's all for me. My name's Tarmac for the Gnomecast. Cheers. Cheers.